All right. Good morning. Good morning. Um, coming on live on YouTube and Facebook. So meet me at the library. Come and give a um, message out. Um, you can come over to my YouTube channel. Um, to um, Prophet Kenneth Hare YouTube channel. I'm trying to get at least up to a thousand people plus on my YouTube channel. You know, up to over four thousand hours watch time. You know, the purpose of me coming live today is to talk about my books and to come and bring out a little bit more information um, pertaining to uh, the things that we're doing here uh, at the New Birth Center. PKM Ministries uh, as well. So we're going to be most um, this topic here is going to be under the YouTube channel uh, that's going to be called Meet Me at the Library. I will be going to the library actually and doing this as well, but the topic itself is called Meet Me at the Library and it's for the purpose of bringing the books out, the Word of God out and to talk about the great things that God is doing in my life and in the lives of the people that are as well. So um, for all those that are wondering, I am inviting you over to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe and like my YouTube channel. Help me get to where I need to be in the world of YouTube as well. Oh, we thank, you. thank God for that. So let me just open with prayer. So Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We come to lift your name up and praise your holy and righteous name, Father. We thank you in advance for the things that you're doing and the things that you are about to get ready to do. And we're asking for your glory, your honor, and your power to come forth in the midst of our lives. And we thank you in advance for all things that are going to operate to your kingdom and to your glory. In Jesus' name we do pray, and as always, amen. So I give a shout out to all October birthdays. And this month, well, happy birthday out to all the October um, birthdays, and then happy birthday to all the November birthdays that will be coming up uh, on next month as well. So we come to give God praise and honor. So today, what I want to talk to you about is my books. I'm going to talk to you about uh, my low content books um, that we're writing, and I'm going to show you these books um, as well. And they are available on Amazon. So, um, we need to see first. This is called, um, this is, um, Later Gym Daily, um, Planner. It is written by Arthur Keel Smith, uh, for children. So you can, this book is also available on Amazon. You can go to Amazon and get this book here. Mm -hmm. It's six ninety nine on Amazon. Um, the author is Kia Smith. All right, so you can be able to get this book here. It's about the Let Gems uh, book. So we do encourage you to go to Amazon. Get it in time for Christmas. Get it in time for Easter. Get it in time for right now. Go to Amazon.com. Purchase this book on a Kia Smith, author Kia Smith. And you can get this book called Little Gems Diamond, uh, um, Little Gems Daily Planner. Excuse me, Little Gems Daily Planner. Um, it's a low content book that is written by Arthur Kia Smith, and uh, it is on it's available on Amazon for six dollars and ninety nine cents, uh, which is not much money when you come and think about things that you purchase and buy. So if you get this book, write down your thoughts with your daughter, with your son, with your children, with your one, and put it in this book here so that when they grow up, as a matter of fact, purchase a bunch of them uh, for each age. So when they grow up, you can have that little information that will be given and you can actually give this book over to them and they can write the things in it. Or you can give it over into, um, through their hands when they get grown and say, hey, let me give you some stuff that you did when you were smaller and the gems and that you have, and we're going to give this to these nuggets and put them together uh, for the glory. So, 
uh, go to Amazon.com, look on the author, Kill Smith, and you can purchase this book for $6.99. Um, the other book here, um, this this book here is called Captured by the Moment. It's also a prayer journal book. Um, this book is written by um, author Kill Smith and, and author Kaylon O'Harris, as well as myself, author Kenneth Hare. Uh, this book is $7 on Amazon. It is a prayer journal book um, that you can take this book and use it for your own personal prayer journal. Also, it's a self-help book as well, so it's mainly got a lot of things in it. It's $7.99 on Amazon. It's a low-content book uh, as well, so you can be able to get this book on Amazon and have this book purchased as well. Uh, it's a great book to have in your collection. I encourage everyone to go to Amazon.com and purchase this book as well. So you can be able to see this book uh, for $7. And get this book also from Amazon.com. Uh, the pages in the book, uh, well, actually, it's a self care book. So the self care book has um, the um, different outline in. I'll show you some outlines in the book. So you can see different. Things that have self care on it that will help you write out your days, your planners, different things you're doing. And you can be able to uh, put this book to great use and have it for uh, your self care purposes and things that you're doing. Say you want to write some certain things down, or this book could be something awesome that you can be able to do those with. And again, it's $7 on Amazon.com. On Amazon.com. Well, hmm. um, the book, this is another prayer book that is also available on Amazon. It's called Factor the Scripture, Mark 4 and 14, the soul is, so is the word. So when you think about this book and you think about your prayer content, uh, this is a prayer journal. You want to be able to go in and write your prayers down. Log your prayers in. Remember, you are the soul of God. I said we are the soul, so therefore the soul is, so is the word. I'm going to sort this on the word. You can purchase these books here on Amazon.com. Um, this book here is $7.99. And you can get this book for $7.99 on Amazon.com. Uh, it's a great prayer journal for yourself. Or you can, if you want, you can buy it for your friends, for family members, for loved ones. For, hey, buy it for your enemies. Give them something to write down in. That way, when they talk about you, they have a reason to do it. And when they have dreams about it, they can write it down here. And it's God gives them dreams or different stuff, and they can write it out. So get it, get it from them, too. And again, remember, this is coming up onto our holiday season. So we need to be able to go in and purchase the books and everything we have for our holiday season so we can be able to get the things that would be needed for our holiday season. Uh, go on over to Amazon.com. Remember it says Mark 4.14, so the sower sows so the word, you are the sower, you are the word, so you are sowing the word, and therefore we must sow the word. And that means we are in our dreams and our vision, our insight. We need a place to log this information in and put it in. Uh, so it is available. And this is through myself, author Kenneth Hare, which you can be able to purchase this book through me on Amazon.com. Or just put it in there and go straight to it on Amazon.com to get the book. Um, another prayer journal is uh, reaching your greatest, uh, reaching for your greatness. On um, reaching for your greatness here, uh, this prayer journal here, here is uh, designed for you to actually go in and look at your prayer journal completely, like something that you want to go in yourself and do. It's a little different from this in here. They're both a prayer journal books. Um, both books are prayer journal books here. But this book here will, will give you uh, a little bit more in-depth where you can write out a lot more details, a lot more information um, that you might have. Say you have a dream or you have something that is taking place in the midst of that. And you want to be able to write that information down. Or you can be able to do that in this particular book here. Uh, and this is Reaching for Your Greatness. So this is everything that you're reaching for, everything that you're going into the pleasure and play you're doing a part and you want to go into it so you're able to write this information down uh, as well and get a little bit more information involved into it as well on this part so, so let me show you the inside of this 
the prayer journal on this one will be uh, a lot more in detail. If you, if you go into it, you got a little bit more detail on the prayer journal. But you can write a little bit more information. You can jot your notes over here to the side. Uh, you can write your um, your own. You can write your key verses here, uh, your key points here. You got your application that you can write here. You actually can write like uh, your prayers down here. Uh, if you're doing scriptures, a different scripture, you can write scripture down. Whatever you want to do, you can put all your different information in here. Um, so that, and it's and this book has a uh, 50, 50 pages in this book. So you can actually write a whole lot more information in this book down. Uh, and listen. This book here has um, 50 pages in it also, um, which is a prayer journal book also. Um, so this is another prayer journal book where you can, where you can have different stuff you can write uh, your information down as well. And I, I would say the difference between this book and this book is more so the covers on these books um, and, and the different outlines of, of what would take place. So this one would be so and so's the word. This would be reaching for your greatest uh reaching for your greatness in it. And so you would be able to get a little bit more in depth detail on it. Uh this book here sells for um this one sells for seven ninety nine. This book here sells for um also um eight dollars on uh, Amazon if the whole purpose of them is is that you get a little bit more depth insight on it. Uh, these are my low content books. Um, I'm, I chose to go into the low content area, writing the books and getting a lot more information out. That way I can design a whole lot more as, as well. Uh, but they are for your purpose of going into um, the purpose of your study time. You want to write your information down, write your stuff down. I mean, even dreams for that matter. If you got dreams that are taking place, you want to write this stuff down. Uh, be able to get this stuff uh, outlined just in time for Christmas. Make, make Christmas great Christmas gift for family, loved ones, friends. Uh, I say bye for your enemies. Say, hey, 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 you want to talk about me so bad? Put it in the book. And that way they can have a journal that they can have. This is also your journal where you can sit down and you can come together on your journal, come together on things that will take place. This is uh, things that will happen now. Meeting at the library is the purpose for this because when you go into the library, what's the first thing you run into in the library? Well, the other full of books. Well, we, we, what are we? We are humans walking full of knowledge and books and information that we have retained mm -hmm. on the inside of us and that we have this knowledge and, and insight uh, that we can get. So go to my Amazon page. Uh, go into uh, my Amazon page on uh, Kenneth Hare Amazon. Uh, put that in, put this topic in here. It will pull this book up along with several other books that I've ever read that will come up as well. But so these are your prayer journals there that'll get you where you can go a little further in your prayer journal. Um, and this book here is also one, another one of my low content books. This is um, uh, Brainstorming Your Biblical Ideas. It says, Writing Down Your, thought, your Thoughts. This is written by me. Uh, uh, author Kenneth Hare, um, and the purpose of this book here, and it's a this is an eight and a half by eleven. This is the same size of a notebook tablet. Uh, I purpose to put one hundred pages in this book, back and forward pages, so that you can be able to go in and do a whole lot more detailed information and writing on this book. Uh, this is a journal of uh, your brainstorming. If you're like me, a, a person that thinks and try to figure out different things to do, or that is a business minded person that's always thinking of stuff, and it is, uh, then you need a place to write your information down. You need a place to put your stuff, your notes down, and, and get your ideas together and stuff. And especially if you're doing something in the Bible, uh, if you're thinking on biblical things, uh, and you're saying, "Man, I need to, I need to write this stuff down. I need a good spot to put this in." And you might write it in the tablet or write it in somewhere else. And you might put the tablet to the side and forget where that tablet is. Or you might even not even think about the tablet. Go start writing something else in it. You want to have a book where you can actually sit down and write this book out. Write your stuff out. Now, on the inside of this one here, it does have the um, note page where you can write 
your whole entire part that is completely in it. It's all of your thoughts that is in this book. Um, it's completely for what you have. It's everything that will come in, in the book. On the front cover of the book, you will see where I have the uh, title again and my name on the front of the book. Because um, I am the author of this book. And then, of course, on the next page, you have a quick message from me. But I am the author of this book. And, um, and this book here uh, says for, I have it at a low price on Amazon. I'm selling this book on Amazon for a limited time for $7.99, which is for the Christmas season uh, and the coming holiday season that is coming up uh, for it. You know, this book would normally run um, $12.99 per book, um, but I'm doing it for $7.99 so that we may get some sales and get these up. So uh, remember, go to the Amazon.com. Put in Arthur Kenneth Hare, order the books uh, for your friends, family, loved ones, or else. If you have a ministry and you said, I want to get a get 100 copies of these books or get 1,000 copies of these books or get uh, copies that are going to help um, fund your ministry or for your ministry or your team of people that you want to sit down and say, hey, this is something I'll, we need to get a hold of. We need to do that. Uh, then um, definitely, most, most definitely get in contact with Amazon.com, they will have a, a area where you can order it. You can, you can get in contact with myself. You can inbox me, uh, send me a message, and I will definitely get up on it to help you and your group get uh, book this type of book here or any one of the books for that matter um, that you can be able to sit down and, and add this, this stuff in. The reason I wrote this book is that I, I wanted to be able to get it out. Um, so that I can help other people come to the knowledge of Christ. Uh, I'm a person that loves the Bible. I love writing. I love doing different things. And so I want to be able to get that information, get that knowledge out to people so that they would know, hey, you can sit down and do the same thing I'm doing. There's no excuse. The only, the only excuse that you don't do this is because you don't want to do it. That's the only excuse. So um, I, I make it my business that every person come in my life before they leave my life or leave my present, you have no excuse. Now, you might have a billion excuses why you came, but when you left, you're going to have zero excuses for why you came to see. And so, uh, and the whole purpose of that is getting it, getting this book up, getting it running and getting everything done, going forward and doing it. So these, these are my low content books. So those are just some of the books that are getting ready to come out. I also have out is that uh, my book that's titled How Did I Get Here? A Judgment Seat Experience. It is available on Amazon for seven dollars. Um, that book I have took that book down from the fifteen dollars and got it on a special sale to for Amazon.com. That is for a, a limited time again for the holiday season that is coming up. Um, another book I have out is called As a Poet Speak. Um, it's it says for fifteen uh, ninety nine on Amazon and on Barnes and Noble Nobles as well. Uh, there's another book. That is called um, your destination. Your destination awaits. It is um, uh, also seven dollars on Amazon.com. So we're asking that you go directly over to our Amazon page um, and definitely get these books. Like I said, they're just in time for the holiday season. Uh, and the uh, the other books that's been out, uh, your destiny awaits. How did I get here? Judgment Seat Experience Volume One, and as a poet speaks. It have been out. Uh, they've been out and available for a while, but we're also going to put them on a discounted price because why? We want want to have these for your holiday season. But so, if you're looking for Christmas gifts for your holiday season, mm -hmm. then head on over to um, Amazon.com and get your Christmas gift for the holiday season. Help us grow in the ministry and help us grow in the things that we're doing. As well, because we need your uh, support. Also, on come to our um, um, YouTube channel and support us on our YouTube channel. Help subscribe to our YouTube YouTube channel so that we can grow in our YouTube channel. Because we will start start coming um, every day on our YouTube channel. Um, we will start doing that in the month of November. So we want to come and get our YouTube channel YouTube channel built up. The title of the 
of our section and meetings called Meet Meet Me at the Library. And uh, so in our library right now, we have the biblical uh, brainstorming biblical ideas. Definitely need that book. You, you need that book. You don't even know you need it, but I'm telling you right now, you definitely need that book. So first book we got, brainstorming biblical ideas. Reaching for your greatness. You need this book because you need to reach for your greatness. Uh -huh. uh, the third book we have is um, Mark 4.14. You are the sword. Every believer and the, every believer that believes in Jesus Christ needs this book because this book is talking about you. It says the sword sows the word. You are the sword. You sows the word. You need this book. Um, our fourth book we have it's captured the moment. You need to be captured by the moment of God so that you can be able to uh, write your thoughts and get everything down and get it together and then bring everything up so we can have it because you need that book. And then for you, for the children uh, and for the parents, uh, you need your Legion's book, uh, Daily Planner, so that you can get it. Uh, ladies um, and um, uh, husbands and men and wives and all you people, you need to get this book. My lady wrote this book, Kia Smith. Uh, this, she's author Kia Smith. Uh, she's on Amazon. This is just one of the books she's going to write. She's going to write plenty more. But for you that have children, that have the girls, look, you need to get this book. You need to put this book in their, in their um, stocking this Christmas uh, season while you're running around trying to find things for them to go in, the, in their stockings. And I'm encouraging you to get this book. Uh, the first thing we need to do as a people, we have we helped you at the library for it and contain to this book. The first thing we need to do as a people is that we need to educate ourselves. And one way we need to edu educate ourselves is by having it in a book. And so that means that we can write down, help the children when they say, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be the president of the United States. I want to be uh, the, the mayor. I want to be this. I want to be, well, guess what? You got your little gems with your females that say they want to be all the things they want to be. Write it down in the book. You got it for your your sons. We'll use this book pencil. You want to write it for your son? Write it in the book. Why write it in the book, Can it? Good question. I'm glad you asked those questions. Let me answer it for you. And the purpose of writing it in the book is so that you, will have a placement and they will have a placement where their ideas and their thoughts and their actions and the things they have will be put together for the benefit of their growth. That way in latter years, like say let's say we get the y'all get the book this year, which y'all gonna get the book this year. So the books will be in your hand for this year. So in two thousand and twenty three, they have a book that they can write from starting from this month and remain starting from today. You will purchase the book today. So starting from today, going all the way into to next year, at the end of December next year, guess what you have? You will have a journal that you done written every little thing down for your little uh, gym. That means your little daughter, your little girl, your your uh, ten year old, your seven year old, eleven year old, twelve year old will have a book that they done written everything down in their little daily planner. Uh, every single day at the end of the next year on December 20, December 31st, 2023, at the end of that next year, then they should be purchasing another book or they should be purchasing other books in between. But at the end of that year, then everything that they have written down for a whole year has been logged into a book for the purpose of reading, revising, understanding, gathering, and bringing out more insight into the book. So, what does that mean? Again, that means that they should be there should be growth, there should be nourishment, there should be knowledge, there should be an increase, there should be a new development. Because why? We want to constantly grow, develop, and bring forth more than we put in the very first time. So our growth, our development, our knowledge, our insight, all those things should be playing a part in books. And so we should have books that we should have them all together. So when we go to the library, um, when we are walking to the library, we got um, books in the library starting from A going all the way to Z. Um, and there's every single topic that you can think of that is found in the library. And then there's then, then, then some, because not only is the books in the library, 
They have in the library. They have computers that give access to the internet. They give access to Google. They give access to every form of ways that knowledge can be retained in the world. So knowledge is no longer a limit to just a book. It's limit. It's it's broader. It's wider. So we have the the hard copy books, and then we have books that are done on digital. We have the video books. We have all different things. And so in other words, the Bible says that that in the latter days that the world will be wicked and wiser. So that means that there will be a constant growth that will be taking place with people that they will constantly grow more and more and more and more. So the more they grow, the more they the more people uh, will know. And so we live in a time where every type of technology, every type of insight is, av- is available. And it is available in a, a great uh, part of it. Now, back in the late 50s, the 40s, rather, um, throughout history time, and back in those times, there was times where um, a lot of um, white authors and readers actually wrote and made statements that if they put something in a book, a black person would not read it. And they said, we can keep them dumb. We can keep them ignorant. We can keep them where they won't learn anything. Because all we got to do is put it in a book. And um, and so a majority of, of the black universe, of black people, grew without knowledge and knowing because one, they did not teach them how to read. Two, they did not teach them how to search out information on what they needed to read. And then three, they kept them in a dump um uh ignorant stage, meaning they kept them in an area where they would not grow. So they so they purposely put it in a book to keep us from reading it, or keep us from exploring it, keep us from going in depth into the knowledge of it. So uh, we this day and time we're in a modern day and time uh so we're not living in a, a stage of, of being in ignorance or living in a stage where we cannot grow in the areas that we need to grow in so we're in a stage where knowledge is a is a given to us we had a part where we can grow knowledge there should not be a person limited because it's in a book anything it should be there should be more authors being uh being born there should be more insight should be, be brought out. There should be more knowledge that should be uh, brought forward in the different things. So, so our increase in our power should grow because we are taking the time to read. We are taking time to break it down. We are taking time to dive into it and explain this on a whole different level than it normally be explained. We are taking we are taking the time to educate ourselves. We're getting degrees. Right now you can get a college degree online less than two years then uh, four years going to a four year university and so um the degree the knowledge the information is is available and so this is like me coming today uh the coming coming for the purpose of the day is to bring knowledge increase bring your to bring you to a, a greater understanding of where you can grow uh, so um as entrepreneurial my ability, my power, and the things that I have is to always venture out. I'm not going to be remain stagnated in an area where it just can't grow. And I don't believe in that. I always believe in growth. I believe in power. I believe in empowerment. I believe in, in bringing myself to the area so that I can be mature enough to understand what's taking place and then to continue to progress in those areas as well. So that means that I'm constantly um, creating new ideas, constantly building new things. Constantly thinking of ways to advance, constantly uh, bringing forth stuff where I can um, help other people to advance. Constantly, that means I have to uh, spend more time studying, spend more time meditating, spend more time uh, finding out stuff, learning new things, uh, di- di- diving off into new adventures and areas. Um, and all of this takes time, all this takes process, all this takes uh, an area, but it also takes the time for me. To step over inside and say, I'm going to be somebody different because I'm not going to continue to be in the same road race uh, area where I cannot grow and be successful in the things that we need to be successful in. So being in, in this part, um, we have to learn how to manage ourselves, learn how to manage our time, learn how to build ourselves up, learn how to go forward, and most of all, learn how to read and study the books that is in front of us. Uh, so 
We should be building libraries in our home. We should be spending time at our public library and going in and, and, and spending time reading some books, educating ourselves. We should be equipping ourselves uh, so that we can advance. We should understand what it means to run a business, what it means to have a ministry, what it means to be successful. Uh, we should be able to have knowledge if we want to advance into different areas. We should study those different areas that we want to advance into and grow into that area. Uh, sec, uh, in the Bible, it says in 2 Timothy 2.15, uh, to study to show thyself approved, a workman, that's you, me and you, a workman that uh, needed not to be ashamed. What we're not going to be ashamed of? We're not going to be ashamed of the Word of God. We're not going to be ashamed that we studied the Word of God. We're not going to be ashamed that we took time to study the Word of God so we can do the next part, so we can rightly divide the Word of Truth. And we can't rightly divide the word of truth if we don't study it, spend time in it, educating ourselves in it, meditating in it, being time to do this. So 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us to study to show ourselves approved. we got to show ourselves approved unto God. Then, then we got to study that word, which is the word of God, break that word apart, which is the word of God, get a better understanding of that word. Because how, why, how are we going to do that? We're going to study it. We're going to mumble over. We're going to meditate on it. We're going to spend some time educating ourselves in the Word of God. The same applies to us spending time educating ourselves in books that are going to educate us in business wise. We want to we want to have successful ministries. We need to have we need to know how to run a successful business. In order to run a successful business, we need to look at ministry as being a business. That means we need to take business classes. We need to have a business degree. We need to have a, we need to understand what it means to get it started from the bottom ground, from the floor. We need to understand how to read blueprints, write blueprints, understand how to have the ability, the ability to build it from the ground up. We're gonna, we need to understand what it means to start with zero, nothing, and build from nothing and make it become something. Why? Because we are visionary. The Bible says where, uh, uh, where there is no vision, the people perish. But happy is he that keep it the law. Well, how, why is the man happy to keep it the law? Because the law is the reason that the vision will continue because the person is going to study the, the guideline and the ability of the law. The law is what's going to come forward in the process and operation. But in the business part, you need to understand the business, the, the part of the business. The business, it starts from zero. You go out there and say, I don't see nothing out here. But the visionary sees the business. And the visionary sees the groundwork. The visionary sees the plan, the blueprint. The visionary sees the building of the plan. The visionary sees stands up there and tell you, on this side of the left side, we will have the wing and the we will have a, another building. We have this, and on the right side, we have a building over here, and we will have this here. And but all you're seeing is dirt. You don't see none of those things. But the visionary sees all the things that are placed in front and all the things that are constantly going forward. So therefore, the visionary start teaching you the person that doesn't see the things on how to build the things that he sees or she sees. And then they turn in turn, they turn around and say, now we need a blueprint. We need a person to write the blueprint. So the visionary goes and get with a blueprint and they write the vision of the blueprint. The visionary goes get with the blueprint after the blueprint. It goes get with the person that comes out and scuffs the uh, covers gate the land and they comes out and they looks at the land. He goes get with the person that knows how to come out and measure and does everything. Then they get with the carpenter. They get with all the uh, all the people that will come out and build. All of these things are found inside of the book. And if we don't spend time studying the book on how to build the business up, then all we have is a dream. And dream doesn't last long. So therefore, we must write it down. We must put it in plain sight. We must build it up. We must come to a better knowledge and understanding on what we need to do and where would you find this information at, at the library. And this is the purpose of us meeting at the library so that we can come in and say, I want to be a builder. I want to build a successful business. I want to build this grant, build what I have that is placed before me. I got a vision for God and God gave it to me, but I want to build it. But the first thing you got to do before you start building, you got to write it out. So now you got to write that vision, Habakkuk 2 and 2 said, write the vision, make it plain. So that when men read it, they can run with it. Well, we're going to write the vision and make it plain. That means we're going to we got to sit down and learn how to write out a business plan. The business plan is our dreams, our vision, our insight, our our, our part that makes us 
become the entrepreneur who we are. So now we got to write that business plan out. We got to put that thing into action. We got to write out our audience, who we're trying to reach. We got to write out our directions on where we're trying to go. We got to write out the things that we, we want to come forward in the midst of this vision that we have. So we want to write it out plainly. Why we want it plainly? Because we're not going to be the only one reading it. We're not going to be the only one running with it. There, there are going to be other people that are going to come and read the vision that we are have that has been given to us by the Lord. And people are going to read that vision, which is going to which is found in these books. They're going to read that vision and they're going to run with it. This was a vision that was in Kia's heart. This was a vision that she saw that she wanted to bring forth out. And her vision is in plain and plain paper available for you on Amazon. And so you go get this vision that was written out. You're going to read this vision. You're going to write in this vision and you're going to make this vision come to sight. Because why? This is the most important part about the vision. We got to put the vision plain, plain before people's eyes because we want you to capture the moment. We want you to capture that moment in the midst of that vision so that you will see what this vision is about. And you can't see what the vision is about when you don't see it in black and white. That's why he said, write it out, make it plain, put it in the face of people. So why? So men, women, boys and girls can pick it up, they can read it, and they can run with it. And this is the thing that we need to do. We need to put that vision plain. So we got to learn to write those blueprints. When we write blueprints, blueprints are for the whole purpose of a person that read blueprints to make that become a reality. So here's the blueprint. Well, let me start from the beginning. So here's what we do from the beginning. The very first thing we do, God gives us a vision. In the vision, we take time. When we wake up, we write the vision down. The second thing that takes place after the vision has been written down is that we think on it. We go into what I call the brainstorming ideas. We brainstorm that idea. Well, so what are we going to do in that brainstorm? In that brainstorming, we're going to sit down for a moment and we're going to think about all the details that God has given us in that vision. See, the thing about the vision is that everybody can't see the vision of where you're going. Everybody can't see what you're going to bring to pass. Everybody can't do it because God didn't give it to everybody. He gave it to you. So you're going to sit down and you're going to brainstorm that that vision. You're going to brainstorm that ideas. You're going to make sure that when you're brainstorming that you get a clear picture on what God has given you to be completely clear. And then once you get that clear picture on what God has given you to be clear, now you can write that vision out. Well, why you got to write it out after that point? Because after you done brainstormed and then thought mm -hmm. on it, you done broke out all the little parts that didn't look good and all the little parts that you thought was so important. Now you're going to be able to write that vision out. When you're writing that vision out, that vision is going to become more and more plain. You will be able to see the insight on what's taking place. You'll be able to see the things that God was saying, hey, this is what you need to bring out. This is what you need to do. And now that you're able to see it, now you can go and put it into the action plan. The action plan is where you, you done took it from the vision standpoint. You done wrote it out. Now here's the action. The action plan is where you go and start developing those ideas that you just read now. Mm -hmm. So the development of those ideas are going to bring it to pass. Now you're going to develop more insight, more knowledge, more part. The more development you get, that means you're researching out your idea. You're researching. You're doing research. You're going on your laptop, your iPad, and different stuff. You're going to research different parts because you want this to be out on out front. Because the whole purpose of it is so that men can read it. So now you're researching the ideas out. You're putting the ideas into plain view. So people can catch it and they can see it. And they can, and then also you can catch it. It's for your benefit as well. So you're going to catch it. You're going to see it. So now this vision is plain. It's plain. It's written. It's out front. Now that you didn't get the blueprint, now you can go write out the plan. You can write out the plan because now you know how you want it planned out. You don't, you're you able to view your audience on who you're trying to reach. You're able to view the people that you're trying to, what the audience is to be. You're able to view your audience. You're able to view uh, you can target in on specific ones or specific areas because now you know your audience. You know the range. You know the area. You can target that information in. And then after that, after you target that information in, now the people can, you can take the people out to an empty field and show them the, the vision that God gave you in the very first beginning. 
And now they can start seeing the development of the vision that God gave you in the beginning. In the beginning, they didn't see the rooms on to the side. They didn't see the west wing, the right wing, the left wing. They didn't see none of that. They didn't see the pipes running for the toilet. They didn't see the, the, the outline of the outskirts of the land. They didn't see none of the stuff. They, they drove by and saw woods. And then the next day they went by and they saw the, them tearing them down. But they didn't know what was going to on, be put on the land. Now you can take them out there and show them on the land the things that are going to come on the land. And, and then once all that come up, now they can see the construction work coming. They can see the blueprint guy work coming. They can see that the building is coming. They can see the plan that the that the lumber is coming. They can see the, the work in progress. They can see the building and the construction of things being done. Then over into a year, now they can see the building being developed, uh, that are being brought up. And now here it is that now that the building is being developed and brought forward, now they can see the coming together of the things that you, that, that you spoke of in the very first beginning when it was zero. So now they can see the, the, the greater part of that wealth coming forth out. And they'll be able to understand that I was glad that I came to the library because when I came to the library, I can see a greater development taking place. Now, a year later, two years later, three years later, they can see an establishment that has been built up and they can take time to look back to the very first beginning and say, I remember when there was nothing here. And I remember when they started off with zero, they had absolute lead. And now they have built us a successful business off of zero. And this is right in that vision. This is right in that plan. And this is why ministries are so hard to start. This is why when people have ministries and they start them off, everybody want to have their own opinion. Everybody want to jump up and have their own say so. But the only people that actually can operate and move and see the outcome of that building, outcome of that ministry flourishes, growth, is the visionary. And all the other people that has all these plans and all these things, all they have is plans. They plan for a building. They plan for a room. They plan for a street. They plan for uh, avenues. They plan for the but they, are, they do not see the vision of that whole entire thing. So all they can do is plan different parts in it, and they can claim different areas in that vision that they want it to be, but they would never be in that whole entire vision because all they have is parts. And so, uh, it's, and their part is only used as a tool for that particular part in that area, but it's not used for the whole entire vision. And so the vision is given to, the person that God chooses to get a vision to and the purpose of that vision that is given to that person is for that person to spend time in their areas of studying, spend time in the area of biblical breaking down, uh, breaking day up, having a brainstorming moment. They got to break that vision apart, break it down into into the slowest consonant symbol so that they can get the they can get it even like they're doing the fraction and the adding and the multiplication and the division. It has to be broken down into the slowest the term, the lowest part that can be possible to give it. Because why? They want every single person that's going to come into this vision to have be able to understand it in the slowest possible term that they can possibly have it in. And if they don't have this vision and they don't have this insight, they don't have this knowledge to break it down to that lowest possible term, then all the people have when they walk in and, and all they see is just a place. So it has to be broken down to the very last detail. This is why it's so important that we must spend time studying. We must spend time breaking it down. We must spend time understanding our audience. We must spend time going into the depths of it. We must spend time taking time out to say, let me fully understand what this is saying. Let me fully understand what my part is. Let me fully understand what my obligation is. Let me fully understand how I can participate in it on what I can do to make it be successful because each person is given a specific task they must fulfill in the vision and in the process in order for it to come to pass. It's like building a multi-billionaire company. Let's take Walmart family. Sam mm -hmm. Walton had an idea and his idea, uh, we had a vision and his vision came from come to an idea. After the vision, after the idea, he created uh, Sam Walton, which was a grocery store. In the grocery store, he did, he made a decision to say that he wanted a place where every person that worked it for Sam Walton to have a piece of stock in the business. So he developed Sam Walton in Arkansas and built Sam Walton from 
from the ground up. And he started his store, which was a five and dime store. And every employee and every person that walked it in the store became a partner of his work. They, that means they owned it a share of a vision that he incorporated. And that and they had shares that they got from the company, from Sam Walton Company. Later in later in life, uh, years down the line, uh, Sam Walton probably never invented and never the thought probably never entered his mind that his business will be a multi-world business as large as it is today. But today, Sam Walton uh, is broken down into Walmart and broken down to Sam Club, which makes Walmart the uh, in the top billion billionaire uh, businesses in the world. Make Sam Walt Sam Club the, in the top billionaire business. So uh, Sam Walton makes um, money off both parts. Is his name off the name of Sam, which is called Sam Clubs. Uh, he makes a trillion, some of uh, a billion, some dollars off of it a year, uh, which puts him into a, be a trillionaire. Off of that, just off of Sam Clubs by itself. Off of Wal uh, the Walton, which is Walmart, he makes another billion some dollars a year. So it puts Sam Walton as a trillionaire. In the in the world, which is one of the top trillionaires in the world, um, and or, I mean billionaires in the world, not trillionaires, billionaires in the world, along with um, Bill Gates, along with uh, the, the, which started uh, Google and all these other different uh, and uh, and they did computers and all this stuff. So when you look at the when you look at a billionaire mindset, you have to look at where they started from. They started from zero. They started from an idea. They started from something small, and they built it from something small to build it all the way up to to where it is today. Uh, like the inventor with Google, uh, the lady that invented lip lip balm that made the lip balm. Um, she started from an idea, and now her company is a billionaire, billion dollar company every year selling lip balm. And so all of this started from. Them just having something small, the very little thing, and, and really a bunch of them started from zero, and they went from zero to billionaire status. They went from from that, and they worked it over and over again. And I'm pretty sure there were some haters on the side that said they won't go never mouth any time. Pretty sure there was people standing to the side, pointing fingers, and said that ain't gonna be about nothing. But the, all those haters and all those people that said it wasn't gonna be about anything, they are still billionaires to this day. And guess where those people are still sitting on the sideline with their ancestors? They're just saying they ain't going to be about nothing. And they're steady sitting around uh, for years and years later, steady saying the same thing. So in order to be successful, in order to walk in an area where we need to walk in, in order to do the stuff we need to do, we need to be successful in our avenue and be successful in the thing. And that's why I'm encouraging everyone to come over to our YouTube channel, like and subscribe on our YouTube channel, then go over to Amazon.com and purchase our books. Every time you purchase our books, it, it helps us to take to have income come in so that we can be able to take the income and turn around and, purchase and, and redo this thing all over again. Um, we are entrepreneurs. That means we are constantly inventing and always reinventing new things and bringing stuff out. We're not reinventing the wheel because the wheel is going to always be the wheel. But in the process of it, we're going to take our time and build up what we need to build and come forth in the things we need to come forth. So therefore, we see ourselves as being millionaires. We don't know, we're not going to sit around and continue to see ourselves broke, continue to see ourselves in lack, continue to see ourselves in this and in, in desperation, trying to find ways and make ends meet. No, we're gonna we are entrepreneurs. That means that our father in heaven was an entrepreneur because guess what he did? He took and saw this world which was nothing and he spoke and it became something and then he turned around and created it to become everything so as an entrepreneur and in, in standing in him we have to take that same mindset and let that mind that's in Christ Jesus be in us that same mindset that says we're going to take something and make it out of and make that, well, that, that nothing and make it out of something and then take that something and make it out of the world and then from the world we're going to create and speak things into existing as though they are. So that's why we're going to call those things it's not as though they are. So we, because we're going to speak it. We're going to bring it forth. So head on over to our Amazon page. Go into our Amazon page. Go into Kenneth Hare. 
on Amazon.com. Uh, you put in the titles of the books or just go into Kenneth Hare. Uh, it's S K N N E T H um, H H A R E and put in under there on the Amazon and it uh, open a uh, section of the heading. And once you put that in, um, the books are going to come up. And then all you got to do is just go down the line and say, bye, 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 bye. And by the time you get finished buying, you end up with like seven books. And go ahead and tell all your friends and all your neighbors and put all your kinfolk, get every single person you know, go on down the street and tell the ones that hate you, you know, your enemies, the one that hate you the most, tell them, come hurry, come buy these books. Get this for your child. Get this for these. And then they sit back and say, I don't want no book for my child. What are they going to do for them? You tell them, say, come on this broadcast. Go to YouTube. Go on Prophet Kenneth Hare page on YouTube and listen to his broadcast. Go on Facebook and pull up and listen to his broadcast so he can educate you. But about me, if they still don't hear you then, then you educate them. Say, let me educate you right now on why you need these books. Your children has dreams and vision and insight. And just because you ain't doing nothing with your life, your children still want to do something with their life. And they want to take you to the next level. And they can't do that if it ain't if they don't have a book in front of them. Because way back in the day, it was told that that all I got to do is put it in the book and a black man won't read it. Let's make that out a liar. Let's make them people eat those doggone words at every chance they get. And let's put them in the perspective that they must come into the knowledge and say, this is very important because we must be able to come forward in and read those books. Now, let's spend time in that book. Let's spend time in that Bible that we got that's sitting on our table holding up dust in, in the house. So let's spend time instead of grabbing it when we go on Sunday morning the church or we don't grab it at all let's spend time in it and spend more time more knowledge more insight let's dig into that word to find out who who we are in christ let's stop all this bickering of, of slavery back and forth and pointing fingers and calling ourselves the black israelites and we are all this and we all that no just find out who you are in the bible first of all find out you're a sinner in the bible and if you're lost without christ jesus and if you don't get the christ jesus in your life you won't make it into the kingdom of heaven that's the first thing you need to do. The second thing you need to do is find out who you are, on who God has chosen you to do. Why are you here? What's your purpose for being here? Uh, do what God is requiring for you to be this entrepreneur that God is requiring you to be. Now, guess what? The same jobs that you're going to is the same business that somebody can work for you. Hmm? The same place that you're trying to support and build up to be billionaire, be a, be a billion dollar place, can be the same way they support and build you up to be a billion dollar billionaire. So your dream, your vision that God gave you, write it down, make it plain, put it out for people so men can read it and they can run with it and they can understand what it really means to come forth from that. And for every person that is starting a ministry and starting, uh, want to go into ministry or starting a ministry, I'm going to encourage you to go to school, get your business degree. Go get a business degree and understand what it means to run a business because a ministry is a business, a church is a business. I don't care what people tell you. I don't care how people say, it's not a business. It ain't about all that. It ain't that. Well, if it ain't a business, why are you taking up money? But if it ain't a business, why you got to build and got to pay your light and your mortgage on it and your rent on it? If it ain't a business, then what? why are you there? You, you might say, well, can I got my house? Your house is a business. If it's not a business, why did they sell it to you? Why are you paying mortgage on it? Why have you got interest rate? Why if you why if you don't make a payment, they put your butt out? Think about this stuff, people. We need to pay pay attention to what is a business and what is not a business. And the last time I checked, when God created this world, everything in this world was a business. And it was a business decision that he created. And you said, no, it wasn't Ken, it was life. But life was a business decision. And he tells us to choose life more than we choose death. And so when we think about what is taking place and what happened, it is a business. God made a business decision. He made a business input. To let us know where we stand, and when we look at what God is doing, the Lord said that He's the Lord said unto His Lord, which is to be His Father, He said that uh, the earth is mine, and the fullness thereof is mine. So everything in the earth belongs to Him. But the Lord, my Lord, said to His Lord, which is to His Father, He said, "Father, I unto Thee I give it to Thee." So He's giving it back to the Father. He's giving it back to Himself. He's giving it back. So all these things that the Lord has done, which is I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, has done, he's giving it back to his father. 
And so we must understand the fullness of what's taking place. And when we look at where we at, it's a business decision that we make. It's a business decision that we make. It's a livelihood that we make. It's a decision that will make a difference in the life of every person we meet. And we must understand. So when we go up into the business and we're saying, I just don't see the purpose of this business. I just don't see the purpose of this and that. I just don't see why I need to do this and do that. But you think about the businesses that you pay your bills to. If the business that you pay your light bill to decide they don't want to put no lights in your house, what would you do? If the business decide that you pay your water bill to decide they don't want to pump any water to your home, what would you do? But the businesses that, that come forth and decide that you know, they will not give you any food, what would you do? For the businesses that decide that they will not give you any finances, that don't even want to give you any place to put your money, what would you do? Think about the businesses that you have. Every business that is developed and that is in this place and in this world is for the purpose of God's kingdom. Every single business, I don't care where you look at, you can look in the military, the government, it's all for God's kingdom. Matter of fact, it's set up the exact same way. The government body is set up for the God's kingdom. The money system is set up for God's kingdom. The military is set up for God's kingdom. The, the welfare is set up for God's kingdom. The banks are set up for God's kingdom. The food supply is set up for God's kingdom. That's the, that's bad right there. So everything we think about on businesses, we pay our mortgage. It sets for God's kingdom. We pay our dues. It sets for God's kingdom. We So how mortgage coming to that? But because God paid a mortgage, Jesus paid a mortgage, but he ransomed his life for us. That was a mortgage paid on our behalf, which was a debt, a debt to that was paid so that we can have, attain eternal life and spend eternity with him. Because it was given to us in the beginning, but Adam and through Adam and Eve sin, they gave it away. They mortgaged it away. And now the enemy came in and charged a fee, a ransom. For our own purpose, thing that is originally I was in the very first beginning. So we need to we need to look at it as what it is. The enemy doesn't want us to have it. The enemy wants to charge us a a, a usher, which is a fee, a tax to what we are supposed to have. So the enemy comes in and overcharges us for what is rightfully ours in the very first beginning. Jesus had to give His life up as a ransom for our salvation. Jesus had to come and die on our behalf. So we can have eternal life again. So because why? The enemy decide he wants to charge a usher, which is taxes, a fee for the things that are taking place. And the Bible says that death, when it is fully grown, fully grown. Now, fact, imagine that death grows with the when it fully grows, it brings forth what well, death. It brings forth the wages of death. What are the wages of death? That's a fee. That's a that's a fee, that's a penalty, that's a payment that it brings forth. And those things are all operation in the, in the thing. So when we look at everything on how it is, we have a death has a purpose. And the purpose of death is to bring forth wages. The wages of what? Sin. Sin will keep us out of the kingdom. The wages of sin, it will keep us from going forth in God's word. The wages of sin will stop us from operating in the kingdom principle. The wages of sin will put us in a place that is not designed for us. The wages of sin will keep us out of our righteousness, which is in God's kingdom. The wages of sin will keep us in an area where we are not progressing forward. And the wages of sin, the last time I checked the new word of God, was death. And with death, death was cast alive with the wages of sin into the lake of fire, where there were where there be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And those things were where all the fees, all the penalties, all the things that Satan caused us to go through in this lifetime will be paid in full in the lake of fire. So when we receive Jesus Christ, we're washed under the blood of Jesus. We are paid under the blood. We have been bought with a price. Think about this. We have been bought from sin, bought from damnation. Bought from the penalties of death. We have been bought with a price through Jesus Christ's blood that redeems us, and now we are back in our rightful place. And so our rightful place is putting us back under our entrepreneur's lifestyle. Our righteous place is bringing us back under the authority of who God is. Our righteous place is bringing us back 
in the presence and power of God so that we can grow in the things that God will have us to grow in. And by us doing these things, that means we have to spend some time in the library. And one of the biggest libraries that God has ever given us is the uh, is the Bible. We have the King James Version that have 62 books, 66 books, excuse me. So that's 66 books that's in the library. And the original text of the, of the Bible, which is called the Duquesne Bible, that's 146 books. And these books are, have been given to us. That's a library. Then we have the scroll, the Dead Sea Scroll. We have the have the, all the other books, which is the Book of Enoch and Jubilees and, and the Book of of uh, First Epiphanies. I mean, uh, First uh, Make About, uh, oh, not Make About, these Macbeth uh, books. We have those books uh, that have come forth. You know, Maccabees one and two and three and four. We have First, Second, Third, Fourth Book of Enoch. We have the Book of, of Adam and Eve. We have the books that they call the lost books of the Bible, which these books are in the Duquesnian Bible and also in the Ethiopian Bible. So if you get those Bibles, you would actually see those books. We have the book of, of Solomon. We have the book of Clistia, Clistia, which is another book of Clistia. Uh, and we have the book that, that has the book of Psalms, which actually has Psalms. Uh, Psalms in the King James Version goes to Psalms 150, but the Psalm in the Duquesnian Bible goes to the 151 Psalm. So we have the Psalms, we have the, the books of Solomon. Solomon, uh, uh, we have the books of Songs of Solomon in King James Version. We have the books of Solomon that is there. Then we have the books of Jesus uh, that have been written that have said if it, if it was all possible that all the books and all the things that Jesus had written, we could not even contain it. So we have all the books of Jesus. We have the things that have taken place. But in the King James Version, we have a 66 book. We have a library that is set for us to study and understand who we are. So we have to know who we are and then spend time in it. And the most important place that we can spend time is, is at the library. So again, meet us for next Saturday at the library as we continue to build and get this operation up right. We want to get all, make sure we got everything in order. That's why we're taking, that's why we're doing it like a week every Saturday until we get to the point where we do it every day. But we are building it up. And we're shooting for November to so where we can come in and do it every day. We can do a section of maybe a 30 minute slot time each time in November per day that we can get it all built up. So please come to our YouTube uh, channel, hit the, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, give us thumbs up, come in on it and say, hey, let me get up on this YouTube channel. Uh, let me find out what these people are learning and doing because we're going to come and spit some knowledge to you. We're going to come bring some information to you. Kill will be with me next week. Um, on it, and she would come bring some knowledge, and she would spit out a whole bunch of information and knowledge on her insight and on things what God had given her. So y'all look forward for my wife to come next, come in with me on next week. She would be right there with me, and we would bring sit it. We would sit down and we would break bread together, and we would spit out knowledge that God has given us. Our purpose is we're going to study this word, we're going to enter into the and into what God is having us do, and we're going to take time to write stuff down. Plan it out, put it on blueprint, and guess what? Y'all gonna say, "Well, them people started off with nothing. Look what they got now." And then next thing you know, you're gonna be saying, "Man, these people making two million dollars a year." And they they went they I remember them sitting down on their couch doing this stuff, and they're making two million per year right now. So just think about that. Just think about. It. I want to put some thought food for thoughts in your head. So next Saturday we'll be on at ten o'clock next Saturday morning um, on our YouTube channel. And I decided to go to Facebook Live this morning as well, so I can bring in a lot more people to get them, to get them to come in mm -hmm. over on the mm -hmm. Facebook area. Um, I haven't been doing too much with the Facebook area, but I want to come back and do a little bit more on Facebook too. Uh, I really ain't been looking into Facebook that that deeply and that much, but I'm going to look back into it again for the Facebook area. Um, and I'm also going, uh, I'm also on uh, Instagram. You can look on Instagram and see a lot more stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'll come out on Instagram. I'm going back to TikTok. I'm looking at that. And then also, I'm also on Pinstrip and uh, social media. You can also go on Google and put my name in Google, and you will find that on Google. Uh, we also have the ministry um, that will continue, to, that is continually going forward. Never sit down, never stop. Uh, we're just going forth in the ministry. I am doing exactly what the Lord has instructed for me to do. And that's, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do is what God instructs. Never would do what man instructs. Never. Never ever do what man instructs. A man will leave you, fail you, drop you in a heartbeat. 
Always follow the president and power of God's kingdom. Do exactly what the Lord say do. And I promise you will never go wrong. I will follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, operating with the Holy leading of the Holy Spirit, uh, and go forth from that. Because when God established this ministry and established this ministry to go forward, it will progress because of what the Lord doing, not what man did. Man can sit back all day long and say what I put in. And that'll be all but what they do is, is, is talk about what they put in. But when God does it, it will be established from the very first beginning all the way to the end. And I can't give nobody praise. And I would not give ever, 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 let me say that clearly. I would never, ever, ever give any man praise at all. It would, all praises would go to the Lord Jesus Christ from the beginning of my life to the end of my life. And so uh, as we are in that process of doing everything we can to get all get stuff up together. Uh, and we're in a time of refreshing in the presence of God and doing stuff we need to do. But at the same time, we're also progressing, putting everything together and getting everything in alignment according to God's will on what the Lord say do. And if anybody don't like it, well, I'm sorry. You can be scratched like a can and squit and kick to the curb right along with everything else. I'm sorry, but I'm not here for you. It is not, I'm not here on this earth to make you happy. My purpose is not to be on this earth to make you be pleased and be all that. My purpose on this earth is to fulfill the purpose will of God and to tell you what thus said the Lord and to bring forth the word and the power and the strength in God's life from God's will to your life and pray that you repent and receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and first Savior. That is my only purpose and, and that you get filled with God, God, God's Holy Spirit. And then also in the process of that, write all these books and all this other stuff I'm doing. So that is my only purpose here on this planet. I am not on this planet for anything else other than bringing forth these books of life and bringing forth the will of God. Anything else other than that, it's just water underneath the bridge. So uh, if you're looking for anything other than that, I'm sorry you're looking for all that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to apologize now. I'm sorry you're looking for all that. Sorry you don't. Sorry you didn't get it. I'm sorry you just, just, just knew that it was there. And so I'm going to apologize ahead of time. I'm going to ask your forgiveness ahead of time uh, on all of that. And if I offended you in that process, I'm sorry I forget to offended you. But I'm here to do the perfect will of the Lord. And that's it. Period. Nothing else. So um, with that being said, I do encourage everyone to come over to my Facebook page. I'm scared of my Facebook. Well, come on over to But come over to my um, YouTube page. Hit the subscribe button, hit, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel. Like I said, we're trying to reach a thousand plus people and have over 4,000 plus watch hours on our YouTube channel. And that means every day we're going to give like a 30 minute spot here. Oh, yeah, we're going to give you the word when we come to. So just bear that in mind. Just go on and put it in your mind. Go on and put it into the back of your mind right here. Put it on this side or put it on this side. Put your one in the back part of your mind and say, you know something? I know you're going to come and give us some knowledge, but he's going to talk about the word of God too. Joel Lamb. So go on, put it in there and just say, get yourself prepared for it because that word going to come forth too. It's going to happen on, on Facebook. Let me tell you all that Facebook live land. Go ahead and get it in the back of your mind. Ken is going to give me a word and it's going to come forward. So go ahead and get that in the back of your mind that a word going to come forward. I'm not just going to come just for the sake of coming. I'm going to come in because I have a purpose and assignment and a reason to come. So Father, we thank you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we encourage every person, Father, that is listening on YouTube and on Facebook, Father, that they will go to Amazon.com, that they will put in a Prophet Kenneth Hare or Kenneth Hare on Amazon.com, that they will scroll down and they will buy every book that we have on Amazon.com. And Lord, that they will fill up the, the Christmas gifts with the children's stockings and all other things that they want to do with it. And that they will, they will flood the homes with these books, God. We pray that every book that is around me, God, that be that'll be out into the homes, into the hands, into the land of every person, God, that they will write it down, that they will write their vision, they will write their plan, God. And not only with these books say, God, but Lord, but for every book that we're gonna write, everything that we're gonna do for your kingdom, God, we ask that they say us successfully too, God, as well, Lord. We pray for every person that's coming to the coming to the live events on YouTube, Lord. Lord, we're going to pray for those thousand plus people, Lord, that you want us to reach, Lord, for those uh, tens of thousands of people, for those, 
20 of thousands of people, Lord, for those millions of people, Lord, for every person that, that we can reach, Lord, with the word of God through YouTube channel, through Facebook, Lord, through Pinstrip, Lord, through um, uh, Instagram, through TikTok, Lord, through every type of social media, God, we pray that you bless us to reach them, God, through these areas, Lord. Lord, we pray also, God, that you bless us to reach people that we see walking down the street, in the neighborhood, Lord, at the grocery store, God, at every event, wherever we at, God, that they be blessed, God, that they be coming to knowledge of. Lord, let us be your steward. Let us be your mouthpiece. Let us be the people that you will use, God, to bring your word to pass, God. Let us become the living testimony, God. Let us be the word of God that they see coming forth down the street. Let them let us see us, God, see you, God. Let them even see the scriptures, God, that we don't even get a chance to see who we are, Lord. But the only thing they see is in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the same was in the beginning. That all they see, Lord, is the word of God upon our skins, Lord. When they look in our eyes, God, all they see is flames of fire, Lord. When they look upon us, God, all they see is the power of the Holy Spirit, God. They see you as a consuming fire, Lord. When they see us from a distant, Lord, they don't see us, but they see the consuming fire of your presence, God. And Lord, when they look at us close, Lord, very close, like in face-to-face -face moment, God, but they still don't recognize us. All they recognize is the word of God, the love of God, the power of God, the sharing of God. They see you, God, and they recognize you, Lord. So, Lord, we pray for your will to be done. We pray for your presence and power to be done. And, Lord, we ask that you, Lord, will restore your greatness, Lord, and your power. So, Father, we cast down and we pull down every strong uh, of, of, of thing that is trying to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. We smash the plans of the enemy and we destroy the working power. And, Lord, we pray for your wisdom and your power to come forth in the mighty name of Jesus and we pray that you go forth, God, and that you have victory, not only in our lives, Lord, but in the lives of every single person, God, that will hear and look upon these videos and that it be used for your purpose and your kingdom, Lord. We pray for the people that are going to receive salvation, God, uh, through this word, God, that is going to receive a revelation through this word, God, that are going to receive insight through this word, Lord, that is going to receive a, a precise word, Lord, they're going to receive direction, God. Through this word, Lord, that anything that was said, spoken, God, that it will help them grow, Lord, in the areas that they need to grow in, God. So, Father, we thank you for the topic, meeting us at the library, Lord, because we're meeting you this morning, Lord, at the library, at your library, your kingdom library. And so, God, we want to put it in your presence and power, and we want to make sure, Lord, that everything that you have for us to do, God, that it be done for the uplifting of thy kingdom. In Jesus' name, we do pray, and as always, amen. Y'all have a great day.